<laughs> we are rolling. Are we live yet? Yes. We are rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are Kristen and Wes, Wes. from RoboLink, and we are doing this weekly webinar today on your technical difficulties. So it's questions from the audience. Um, we'll be starting out with just us, but we're going to have our co-drone experts um, in to answer your questions because they all seem to be about co-drone. So, First question we got from Scott. So he's just checking in and wondering if slash when the Chromebook version of the coding language will be available. If it is not going to by mid-October, he needs to find an alternative for a class he teaches. Okay, good news, Scott. You don't need to find an alternative because it will be available on September 22nd. And Wes is going to have more details for you as well as what it is going to look like. So, Wes, it's all, right. all you. So, I am going to pull it up on my computer. Um, we're still working on it, but you can see here, da, 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 it's the developer version, so you can't really download it yet, but we have, uh, I installed it locally just so we can try it out. And let me open it up first. Do to launch. So the nice thing here is um, if you have Codron Lite or Pro, um, you can use either of them with with the Chrome app. It's going to be all block coding for now, um, but it's got a nice little little wizard for you to update your Codron and everything so that you don't have to go through all the steps of downloading drivers and um, making sure everything's up to date. Um, it's just going to do the updates for you. It'll just walk you through the process. Um, and then let's say once you've... Oh, where's my mouse? I can't. Once you have updated everything, then you can just skip a, skip ahead to the, um, the Chrome app where you're going to be able to do a lot of block coding. Same thing as um, those of you that have used uh, Codron Lite. It'll be the same thing as the, the native app, but it'll be a Chrome app. So you, it'll be able to run on Chromebooks, Macs, um, PCs, anything that you can, well, not anything you can install a Chrome on, but um, basically Chromebook. Mac and PC, uh, which I believe most schools have. Yep. Um, this should be ready on the 22nd. If we have any changes, uh, if we have to push it a few days back, we'll, we'll uh, let you all know. Um, but definitely by mid-October. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Wes. So, again, if you missed it, um, Chrome app for Snap is going to be available September 22nd, and that will be um, able to download on MacBooks, well, any Mac computer product, any Windows computer product, as well as Chromebooks. This is going to be really good for schools since we know a lot of you guys are using Chromebooks and Netbooks. So next question, actually we get a lot of questions about our motors and a lot of the problems that you're going to have with your co-drone, this one is Bob, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the problems that you're going to have with co-drone are going to be because of your motor. So if you realize that one of these guys is just not working, it's not spinning, um, what you will need to do is hold your co-drone in your hand while giving it throttle. So you're going to want to hold it like this because these propellers are a little bit deadly um, and we don't want you to cut your finger off. Um, and if your motor isn't spinning, it's probably because it's not making proper contact with the wiring inside this main frame. So again, what you're gonna do, you're gonna give it throttle while you're holding it in your hand. We're not going to do it today. We're gonna to leave that to you guys. And then you're going to see which of your motors isn't moving. And then you're going to carefully wobble it. And I would like to emphasize carefully because again, we don't want any amputated fingers, okay? Um, so if you wobble it just like a little bit right here and it starts spinning, that means you have a working motor, but the frame's not gonna be able to hold it well for whatever reason. Maybe you crashed it too many times, maybe it's 
just come loose after some wear and tear, it's fine. Um, so what you're gonna do, you're going to take your motor, and of course it's not gonna work now, gently out. That wasn't very gently, but that's okay. Um, and then there are wires on the inside of the motors and you might need to bend them with like tweezers or like something small, just a little bit. So the contact in the motor and inside the main frame, um, it's going to make contact much easier. And then if your motor still keeps failing, it keeps falling out, then you can take your codron apart and look at the circuit board inside and that might be bent. So if that's the case, you can bend it gently back. They're made to be flexible, but not like too flexible. So be careful. And then, yes, yeah, so that's just caused with like a large number of crashes. Just be careful with that. Um, if your motor is spinning, like these propellers are spinning, if your co-drone isn't flying, there could be like 10 million things going on with that. So make sure you have your propellers in the right direction. So top right, bottom left. Yeah, that's right. Top right, bottom left should be going clockwise. And the top left and the bottom right should be, oh, sorry. Top mm -hmm. right and bottom left should be going counterclockwise. Top left and bottom right should be going clockwise, okay? Um, and then check your motors, because like especially if you have a carpet, you know someone that sheds a lot, like me, if you have a dog or a cat, um, you might see hair or fibers wrapped around the motor shaft. Um, all you have to do is pull your motor off and then take those out, put the propeller back on, it should be good to go. Um, but make sure when you are replacing your propellers, you don't push the propeller too far down because then that will cause a lot of friction and then the propeller won't be able to spin. Um, again, really easy to take these off. And then if you take your propeller off and the tip is bent, you can bend it back into place. Um, and then if nothing works, you realize you have, oh, Sometimes you might have a really just beat up propeller. Um, it might be bent up a lot. It might have stuff missing. Um, if it's just bent, you can straighten it back out. But if you realize you need a new propeller, a new motor, maybe new guards, you can go to shop.robolink.com and replacement parts are available. It's all under $20, so you definitely won't go broke trying to fix your co-drum. Another thing that, um, oh, let me close. One second. One second. Trevor, technical questions. <laughs> we're, we're bringing Trevor in as well. Trevor is our uh, one of our co-drone experts. But one of the things that um, I, I like to do, just to remember, uh, is if you had little arrows at the end of your guard, that's the direction you oh, want yes. the propellers to turn. So you're gonna see these little arrows on here. I don't know if you can see them. Ooh. <laughs> oh, They're very you, small. you can kind of see them on the camera. Anyway, there's these little uh, arrows on here and um, that signifies which direction they point. So if you had arrows on the end of your guard, you would basically want the propeller to turn in that direction. So there's an arrow here, you want that one to turn this way. This one goes that way. And that one goes that way. So that means these two can be switched and these two can be switched. But the, if you switch these two, you're going to end up with a drone that just does this when it tries to fly. So this is going to be the ground that's just going to go, yeah. Just a cool uh, rule of thumb to cover with your students and to help yourself remember which propellers go where. Yeah, because the arrows can be really hard to see if you're not used to it. Um, okay, so. We're introducing Trevor. Trevor's here. Trevor is one of our co-drone teachers and experts. Um, he is here to answer all of your questions. I actually have some. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Maybe not all of them we answer too. Um, okay, so we got a couple of questions this week. Um, 
Okay, so two people said their co-drone light is drifting to the side on takeoff instead of going straight. One person has other co-drones working fine. It's only programmed to go up. There is no fan or AC running. And the other person is on Windows. One is on Mac. I don't know if that makes a difference, but we will find out. Trevor. Um, so one of the causes of like if your co-drone is drifting and such is just from over time, like wear and tear on the motors and propellers and all that. So usually what happens is one of your motors is probably a little bit weaker than the rest. So thus, whenever you're doing your normal flights, one's a little bit weaker, and so it tends to drift to the side. Uh, a couple things that can help with that is just the environment that the drone is flying in. Um, on the bottom, it has a camera that tries to detect its movements as it's moving around. If it's on like a very reflective surface or a surface area with no pattern to it at all, what will end up happening is it can't figure out exactly where it was before, and so then it'll tend to drift. Um, and that just gets worse with the motors because if the motors are causing it to move a little bit, it then it's not able to figure out what exactly is happening all the time. Um, one of the ways to fix it is either um, a lot of times like a nice textured carpet is one of the best things to fly on because it's not reflective, usually has some pattern to it, all that. Um, one way to manually try to correct it, if you're using Arduino, you can use the trim function um, and just set it at the very beginning, and then that will just constantly give it like a little bit of offset to try to correct it. Uh, for Snap, unfortunately, I don't believe we have the trim function implemented and working, but one thing you can do is rather than doing like flight event takeoff, if you just set the throttle, you can also give, like let's say it's going to the side, you can give a little bit of roll the other direction. Um, and just do like five or 10 rolls, something like that and that'll help correct it out, and that's essentially the same thing as what the Arduino trim function does, is that'll help get you the much more stable direct flight, and yes, it's unfortunate that you know, it happens with some drones but not other drones, but it's basically just the wear and tear on the motors and propellers is what causes it. Awesome. We actually just had a long meeting about how we can uh, minimize that from happening, so we're working on having that happen less uh, between drones. Awesome. Okay. Next question. Hold on one second. Okay. My co-drone stays at a certain height when it takes off. How do we program the height it can fly at? Or we've got a couple of other questions. I have this question too. The drone does not stop and it hits the ceiling. Sometimes it crashes. Mine does a weird exorcist thing where it just crawls around the ceiling and then falls down. <laughs> so, Trevor, how does one fix this? All right, so that is usually, those are usually fixed more in your software itself. So for the takeoff height, if you use the flight event takeoff, it's pre-built in, it'll just go up to a certain height. So even if you like add in longer delays or anything like that, it still will always just go up at the same height. One way to fix that is rather than just doing takeoff, is use throttle. So if you like throttle 100, go turn to control, and then delay, with that you can then use the delay to control your height. And I'm guessing more than likely for those that are running to the ceiling, um, either lower down your delay so you don't go up quite as high, or if like you're a snap user, you have to remember to set your throttle back to zero again, because otherwise it's just gonna keep going up and up and up, and thus why you run to the ceiling. Um, and what happens a lot of times is since the propellers are sucking air down, when it gets up against the ceiling, it gets a lot more suction. And so even if you do like full throttle down or a landing command, it's not able to actually get off the ceiling. You have to go for a full like flight event stop in order to get it to come down from the ceiling usually. Okay, so other question, would you recommend a kill switch for yes. either program? Okay. I highly recommend it for both programs. Okay. So as you go along, we teach you how to do like a kill switch. So in Snap, a lot of times we have it be the space key. And just whenever you press the space key, it sends the stop command. So that way you can stop your drone whenever. Uh, if you're using Arduino, as you advance along, uh, as you get into like the timers and such, we explain how you can have a stop com command so that way you can just immediately press a button, stop your drone. It also adds great safety feature for in case you're like, about to run into someone or crash your drone. Okay, um, and then so if you are having this problem on a regular basis, what we recommend, um, there's like the little claws um, like a lot of schools will use them to pick up trash. <laughs> so make sure you get one of those if you suspect this is going to be happening to you on a regular basis. And then, yeah, just kind of grab it off the ceiling. And the, this light situation is not working out, but that's okay. Um, next 
Yes, that would be great. Okay, next question. I can't find the clock. It's oh, okay. Before we before we answer the next question, um, I'm I do I handled the the design um, of uh, the website and public things like that. So I, I deal with a lot of like how do we move forward with getting the code drone to be a little more user friendly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so we are also working on having you be able to actually set the height uh, right. to say like, oh, I want to be, you know, a meter and a half off the ground, things like that. Um, so we're working on that as well. Um, that should be, um, I would say, ready before, uh, probably before um, or by next first quarter next year. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So. Before April 2017, we've got that going. All right. Um, 2018. To 2018. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So we got this one from Facebook. Unfortunately, the name was in Chinese, and I could not read it. But thank you for I asking. Oh, okay. So I want to implement obstacle avoidance. Can I use the IR sensor on the code drone to detect the distance? All right, that is something that um, I believe um, Arnold, one of the other guys here, has messed around with. Unfortunately, I don't know that we actually got that working. Uh, part of the problem we're having with that is in order to get that working well, um, you need to have very quick feedback and reading from the drone. And unfortunately, right now, we're having a little bit of issue with our sensor feedback. We're currently trying to implement that and get that working better. Um, but um, so once we get that working better, something like that should be possible. But the problem is since the update rate right now is around half a second to a second, so that's too long of a time. You can't really tell if anything's there or not because a lot of times you just miss the signal bouncing back. Um, but once we get that working, then we should be able to do that. Awesome. Or also, speaking of, <laughs> I'm, speaking I'm, of I'm like the guy that teases about the future. Yes. Um, so we're, we're looking at ha adding a, um, a uh, four-directional infrared sensor it would be yeah. like a, a thing you plug on to um, so if you if you actually open up the code drone let's do it right now maybe some of you haven't done this so pull off the motors and then you go boop and then you've got a board here right so that was what I was talking about before if something is bent like that one kind of looks like it might be you can very gently bend it back into place, and hopefully that will help with motor connection. Um, but if you look at the little four pin up here, we're trying to add, have the, uh, like a little add-on that you can just plug into that, and it'll basically have infrared sensors pointing in four directions. And then with that, we um, are trying to have uh, obstacle avoidance work. Yes. So that is mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, we don't have a timeline on that yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So next question. Okay. So in the same kind of vein, I want to be able to tell my code drone to fly in a certain direction with GPS. How do I do that? I will say right away, don't try to fly your code drone outside. Um, Wes took it apart, but <laughs> <laughs> these things are small. Like it's this big. You know, and there's not going to be a lot of air resistance. It's going to kind of just go with the wind, and that might not be in the direction you want to go. Um, and it's also um, using a Bluetooth signal to get its commands. So if it flies out of the range, which I think is about 20 feet, um, then it's going to be on the last command that you put in, and it might not be the command that will bring it back to you. It might be in the command that sends it hurtling into a tree. So. Don't fly it outside. All right, so GPS, what do we do? Um, for GPS, that, I mean, I don't know for sure. I haven't even necessarily thought about it before. One of the issues you would have is, as we're uh, was just saying, um, if you fly it outdoors, you're going to have a lot of issues with the drone itself. Yeah. Flying it indoors, uh, you're not going to have as strong of a GPS signal, especially if you're in a large metal or concrete building. Um, but it is something that should be possible. Again, as Wes was just pointing out, these pins on top, uh, if you can make use of those and design your own external thing, I don't know that we currently have anything in the works for that, unfortunately. Um, but if you wanted to take the time to do that, that is something that is theoretically possible to do.
You just yes. have to make sure it's light enough weight that the code drone can handle it. Yeah. But currently it's not supported by us. Right. So there's no there's no GPS on the board right now. Yes. Um, so in order for it, for you to do <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there. there. <laughs> so if you wanted to do like GPS commands, yeah, like like Trevor was saying, you'd have to do something external. Um, yes. If we had a, had a GPS on board, it would be a much more expensive drone. And oh, definitely. Not as accessible for schools. <laughs> yeah, or anybody that's not super rich. So, <laughs> yes. Um, but if you want to add your own external GPS, we're not going to stop you, and we're probably going to ask you how you did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Next one. We got one from Amy. This was a while back in our RoboLink Facebook group. Um, can you program the co-drone's camera as well as the drone? All right, so currently on that, we do actually have some people here, like right now, that we're just working on it like these past few days. Uh, we're trying to get that working. Um, unfortunately, with that, you wouldn't be able to process it if you're using like the Codrone Pro. You can't just process it all on this board here because this board's not powerful enough to handle um, processing the images. And also, the only way to get the video feedback is through Wi-Fi, and this board doesn't have any access to it. So the only way to do it is actually through your laptop. Um, and unfortunately, Snap doesn't support that either, so we're currently trying to create um, ways to do it. Uh, we do have someone here who's already done it, but we're trying to get it well-supported and documented. Um, but doing it, it would have to be written in either like C Sharp or Python or something like that directly on your computer. So it's a whole different thing from anything else that we currently have running. Um, but it is something that is possible. And hopefully sometime in the relatively near future, we'll be able to get some documentation on it for those of you who want to go that route. Awesome. Okay. All right, so we've got a bunch of these from Facebook. When I try to upload my Arduino code to my controller, I keep getting an error message. The light color on my Bluetooth board also changes, and it looks like the light change is usually to a blinking yellow color. All right, for that, um, just I would say basically make sure you're going through the whole uploading process correctly. Yeah. Um, so the one thing they need to make sure of is on the board, you have these three switches over here. Make sure that you flip the one switch up. Um, you need to make sure yeah. to do that and then press the reset button right down here below it. Uh, once you do that, this LED over here on this side should start blinking after a few seconds. If you have mm -hmm. that, then the board is in upload mode. And then, yeah, like Kristen was just saying, if make sure that the light on the Bluetooth board is blinking red or solid red, uh, again, just press the reset button down here on the board next to it uh, to make sure it goes into that. If it's currently solid green, it means it's still connected up to your co-drone, and that's when it definitely will not work. A lot of times the easiest way is just take out the battery in your co-drone, that way it disconnects. Then yeah, once you have that, hook it up to your computer with the USB cable, uh, plug it in down to the bottom of the Bluetooth board down here. Um, make sure you have the correct port selected on your computer. If you have like multiple different controllers that you've been using, you might have to change ports. And then once you have that, you should be all ready to go for uploading. Nice. Cool. Cool. Okay. Also, if you have questions live, you can totally just type them in uh, in the comment section and we will see it immediately and we can answer it. Okay. And I also, like, I think a lot of these problems have to do with updating your Bluetooth module. Um, Unfortunately, that only works for Windows. Um, so I tried looking for the past couple of days. It doesn't look like we have anything for Mac. Um, do you guys know if that is ever going to happen? I would hope so, but I yeah I didn't realize it was only for Windows. Press. Yeah. Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, the Bluetooth update Bluetooth, process. Bluetooth boards, if they are not up to date, they um, that's. That should be pretty rare, um, but there. Yeah, the only way we have to update them now is on Windows. Uh, if you are having, if you're having trouble finding a way to update the Bluetooth, just contact us and we can figure something out. Um, because uh, right now, most of the Bluetooths out there should be 
the latest version. Yeah, so um, if you, for some reason, can't see the captions to the side, um, our support email is support at robolink.com. We're very good about getting back to people, we hope. So, um, yeah, just email us. We'll get back to you. Trevor might be one of them. We have another person that can help you out. So, all right, next up. So, how do I control my co-drone with an app instead of the controller? Because controllers get big clunky, you have your phone with you all the time. How do you do that? So to do that, what you have to do first is uh, make sure to turn on Bluetooth on your phone because you need to connect to the drone through Bluetooth and go ahead. Actually, no, you don't need a pair first. Um, so <laughs> then you just need to open up the app. Uh, it's Patron, P-E-T-R-O-N-E. -E. Yeah, I'm um, going to pull it up right now so you can see what it looks like. It is right here, so it should look the same. Um, well, same icon on both Google Play and on the App Store. Yep. So you can open that up. It'll ask you to log in and create an account. You don't have to. Uh, what that's used for is it does have the like laser tag battle functionality. So if you um, wanted to do that and save like your history, like your win loss, all that, you create an account and everything. Otherwise, you can just press skip. It'll open on up. Um, a lot of times it'll initially pop up and ask like, oh, hey, there's a drone nearby. Do you want to pair to it? Uh, so you can go ahead and, you know, pr press that. Um, otherwise, if you go, there should be like a little gear icon on the side. And then that'll open up a little menu and there'll be an option for pairing. Once it does that, it'll show like the nearest drones and it'll give like their little model numbers. Uh, we recommend like if you want to connect to your specific run. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, this one doesn't have it. Uh, but we've been starting to give out little stickers, and you can write down, like, the drone's four-digit number on it. And then once you do that, then you can remember which one's yours. And then you can do that. You know which one to connect oh. to. And from there, then, it'll pair up. It'll ask you, you know, what's your setup? Are you using the drone? Are you using the wheel? Are you using FPV? All that. Uh, so you can go through the settings, and then there should be, like, a flight option. Right, um, and there's also an entire manual on how to control your co-drone with the app. So um, once the, once we see this video to our Facebook page, I'm going to be posting like an FAQ document, and that will have a link to the manual in it. It's huge. We're not going to go through it because that will take all night, and we're hungry. So <laughs> we're always hungry here. Um, of the for the app, um, just so you know, the app is uh, it's a third party app that only allows you to fly it around and um, use the drive kit and the um, you can stream the first person camera module. Um, for programming, we do not have an app yet. Um, that will right. be next year, I would say. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, one quick note: as you mentioned, the FPV module. If you're using that and you want to fly with that, um, the FPV module, as I kind of mentioned earlier, sends out a Wi-Fi signal. So rather than connecting to it via Bluetooth, you would actually need to connect to its Wi-Fi signal. So it'll be like Patron and then have like a four-digit number. Uh, so when you go into your Wi-Fi, connect to that one. The password is 12345678, if I remember correctly. Um, so just connect up to that, and then you can log in that way. Uh, and then it'll do same process, but then that way you get the video stream as well. Okay. Um, I think that's all the questions that we got. Um, have you guys heard of anything that you, like, do you hear anything that people need to fix on a regular basis or any frequently asked questions? Hmm. For me, I think one of the most common ones I see for support would be, yeah, the, like your drone flying straight ones. Um, and yeah, like I said, just need to either give a little bit of offset and always have like, you know, roll at 10 always or use the trim functionality. Uh, another one that's pretty common is the motors aren't getting a good connection and not spinning. Uh, there are two different fixes for that. The one that's a bit better, but you have to buy another product is if you get some conductive paste. It's just like this paste that um, is conductive and just put like a little tiny bit on like the copper pads there on each one. And then when you plug your motor in, it gets more surface area and a better connection. And since it's also like a paste that's kind of thick, it stops the 
propeller from falling out as easily and gives you a good connection. The other thing you can do is usually what happens with that. This one, I don't know how well you can see, but like sometimes there'll be like those little lines that kind of start forming. What happens is just from like the motor connecting and disconnecting, it kind of wears down the copper a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you adjust just a little tiny bit, you don't want to go too much to make sure you don't mess up the wires. But if you see those little wires in the end of the motor, just get like a tweezers and just push them a little bit to one side or the other. Uh, that can also help you out pretty well. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of issues can be resolved also by updating to the, the latest firmware. Yeah, right. Um, so the, the developers that are working on the firmware for this drone, um, they're constantly, you know, making updates. And uh, right now, you can update it through the app, uh, and soon you'll be able to update it straight in the Chrome app. Um, it'll Yay. just be part of the onboarding process. Yeah, and so I can post the link that shows you how to update all of the firmware and like the Arduino libraries and everything that you will possibly need after we're finished the video. So that link will be up. Okay. Right. Um, any exciting product development? We're working on a classroom kit. Uh, yeah. For those of you that are educators, our teachers, um, either in a summer camps or after school programs or in a school, we're working on a classroom kit where you can um, it'll come like, with a nice carrying case. You can put four drones in it with a bunch of extra parts. Um, so I know a lot of you are facing uh, issues with batteries running out too quickly and not mm -hmm. having extra. Um, so we're going to yeah. have uh, extra batteries in there. It's going to come with, uh, actually, it's going to come with this little RPM checker. Um, oh yes, that's gonna help with the motors a lot. Yes. So you can check um, if your motor is up to speed, and if not, then you can know that you need to replace it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's gonna be this little device that you plug the motor into, and it's gonna start spinning, and then you'll be able to check uh, whether it's slower than the other ones. Um, and then as long as they're all the same speed, it yeah. will uh, it should be more balanced than. Um, than one without one sitting around at the same speed. And Trevor is actually working on the old guard yes. that will keep your fingers intact. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So you, you put the motor in the little guard and then you plug the, the guard into the RPM checker. RPM yes. stands for rotations per mint. Yeah. Yes. So nice. you can cover that with your students if you'd like. Okay. All right, so if you have any questions, we're giving you like 15 seconds to <laughs> ask them, type them in on Facebook really quickly. Otherwise, we're out of here. Yeah. But you can always email us at support at robolink.com um, and we can answer your questions one-on-one, -on -one, help you out. Um, the Facebook group, um, I believe it's something like Robolink, Codrone, Arduino, lovers, I don't, yeah, it's some what string of words. It's, I, I believe it's uh, Rokit, Arduino, Codrone users or something like that. Oh, it's ones. Robolink kit owners and then in parentheses, oh, robot drone Arduino. So um, that has been a forum where people have been asking questions as well as just posting the awesome stuff that they are doing with our kits. So it looks like no one else has any more questions. Um, again, feel free to contact us if you do, and we will see you next week. We're going to teach you how to use Codrone in your classes. Aw, right. oh, snap. Oh. <laughs> All, right. All right, have a good night. Thank you for watching. Bye. Ta -ta. Bye.